From the crossroads of the Ozarks, it's PID Radio. Welcome, I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Let me come in again. <laughs> and I am Sharon Gilbert, and welcome to the barn. We're going to be out here in this beautiful barn that you helped make possible until the cows come home. That's right, and since we don't have any cows on this property, it's going to be a long, a long, long time. time. Well, the last time they were here was the first year we lived here. Yeah. On this grass tree they're on the other side of the fence all the time knocked down the fence between us and the pasture behind yeah, us and pretty the hilarious. cattle wander but, hey, but the we'll grass talk really about, is greener we'll discuss why cattle are a problem these days and everybody's <laughs> yeah those oh, those cows have come home to roost they are talk about mixing up your uh, <laughs> <laughs> your metaphors <laughs> well thank you for joining us and uh, thank you again for your support which has made this uh, workspace possible uh, you can find uh, if you are so led and if you can afford it because we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the economy here in just a bit um, we we do have a page uh, you can link to at pidradio.com slash donate gilberthouse.org slash donate yeah people and, occasionally ask which is why we try to mention it every once in a while yeah and, and we're we're not really good about <laughs> We're terrible. Every now and then there'll be a troll on social media say, you are grifters. Well, we're the worst grifters ever. We really are. We are really bad about mentioning that we have a donation page, but yeah. many of you have found it on your own and you have been kind enough not only to share through online sources, but you've mailed us checks. And we truly, truly appreciate it. It uh, really makes possible what we do. And uh, this barn is... Uh, becoming a very useful space we've got a number of areas there's really not much space in this barn that's going unused that is so true yeah. um, i mean seriously you guys the lord has worked through you so many times there have been times when derek and i've had to write a big check for this or that and we thought okay this is really taking our reserves down to the dregs and then suddenly a donation for that exact amount comes in yeah our our contractor christ power construction david james barbara james they have um, been working on a, what we thought would be a relatively small project. Um, I mean, yeah, it's still a major upgrade. The well, windows we paid that are for it up installed. front. We, it was a relatively right. small, but, but, and he is extremely honest. I mean, so honest. He's yeah. as honest as the, as the day is long, as they say. But as he's gone through, he's discovered things that during the manufacturing of this manufactured home, mm-hmm. There were shortcuts taken. There were, yeah. No, none of the Tyvek or, uh, I know that's a brand name, moisture but that's brand. a moisture barrier between the sheathing of the house, which is the plywood they put up outside the framing and the insulation and all that, and the siding. There was no moisture barrier, which is standard operating procedure on homes. This we're was, assuming this there's home, insulation in there. I, I assume there is. When, when he, he and, pulled off some stuff, yeah, yeah there's insulation okay. back well, there. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, but it... it uh, he, he discovered that, that, I mean, that was like one thing, but there are other things. So we've got a cinder block foundation turned out the mortar and some that of the, between some of the blocks had disintegrated. Falling apart. Right. That needed to us. be repaired. Uh, there were, there was some water that was getting in behind the siding mm-hmm. uh, near the deck that had been built on the back of the house before we moved in. So mm-hmm. that had to be repaired. Oh, and, and yeah, the so. area where he needs to take down the guttering in order to put up the siding, he discovered that, that the, uh, 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 the, the soffit. soffits were held up with, and I'm not joking, with the kind of staples that are on your office desk. Yeah. Teeny weeny little lightweight regular staples. They they didn't look like uh, they weren't construction construction staples. staples. You know the kind that are like an inch long. These are these were yeah. They should have been actually screwed in. I would mm, think or or something or but not certainly stapled with a hand stapler from right. your office. Right. So to fix that, he's going to have to take the gutters down. But anyway. We had to write a check for um, cost overages. He needed to go buy some more equipment mm-hmm. and, and so on. And so it's like, okay, that's right. right. And, well, and then suddenly there comes in a check that was almost to the dollar amount. Exactly. Just written. So, it was one dollar under. Yeah. So the Lord, <laughs> again, just providing as needed. So again, so thank, thank you. you. We we are truly, truly thankful. And by the way, oh, sitting we'll here, we'll talk about my, that in a, in a minute. Okay. Okay. Download our app. It's free. Mm, won't yes. cost you anything does not cost you a dime to enjoy well enjoy may be a stretch but consume <laughs> almost 20 years of content that is true um, all of the prophecy interviews are now on the app and this in, would include the roku apple tv and now amazon fire tv we're yeah. in the fire tv store so if you've got a fire stick and or if google you've got a fire tv and google tv yeah 
Uh, Android TV, I think, is also a thing. But we're in all of those stores now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is confirmed. We've got it now on our Fire TV in the uh, We've uh, in the living room. We have right? infiltrated. And, uh, after seeing how it looked on the Fire TV stick, I've tweaked it now. I got to check it out, make sure it still looks good on the Roku. I'll, I'll do that before I leave here today. But uh, change the uh, layout a little bit so you can access the classic stuff a little more easily. So the the uh, prophecy interviews that we did in the at the prophecy conferences from 2011 through 2016, in some cases, uh, there were a couple of those conferences where we did something like 20 to 23 interviews over the course of about a day and a half. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were, we were running a pretty tight schedule there, 15 minutes in, 15 minutes out. Mm-hmm. But we got to talk to people like Chuck Missler, um, Gary Steerman, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Ally Marzulli, Russ Dizdar, Doug Hamp, uh, Rob Skiba, Tom Horn. You're featured mm-hmm. on a couple of those. And it, it was really a wonderful sampling of Russ Brialt and Barry Schwartz, the two men who are really the world's experts. And Barry Schwartz just, just called home recently, recently yeah. uh, who are experts in the Shroud of Turin. So a lot of really fascinating stuff there. And that's all available now on the app. Now I'm going to go back and, and get uh, back to work on the uh, classic PID Radio, classic View from the Bunker stuff from oh, 2005 well, and onward and uh, View from the Bunker 2009 and onward. That explains all those moths in the house. <laughs> you opened that vault. I told you. Yes, yes. We had no idea what might be in there. Yeah. Oh, scary How stuff. they can live on digital files, I, I don't, don't know, know. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty scary. <laughs> um so you'll find all of that at uh, uh, the, the link to the app stores at gilberthouse.org slash app. Need to put up a page for Fire TV because uh, we, we've not got an updated graphic from um, Subsplash. That includes the Google TV, Android TV, and uh, we'll Fire, Fire Stick uh, links. But we, we will get those, and I'll put that together here in the next few days. We'll get that. Um, so, uh, oh, yes. Uh, I'm sitting here wearing my GHTV t-shirt. I know you are today. representing. Yes. Uh, we've got GHTV t-shirts. We have got uh, Red Wing Saga t-shirts. Mm-hmm. We have GHTV mugs available. All the, these are at Light Hive Creations mm-hmm. through Kenny C. and his fiance Gidget Manning. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, she is a talent. Yep. She is the one doing the majority of this heavy lifting. And, and she is incredible. We've got hats coming. Yep including PID Radio. Apps. I know, I know. And, Isn't that exciting? Uh, we've not had those since about 2006. I've so. got my old one, and yep. uh, I understand that David Inslee still has his, so <laughs> thanks, David. Appreciate that. So that stuff is coming. Um, left turn, those of you who have been asking about my eyes, they're still really bothering me. I know you're praying for me, and I, I can tell. I really can tell. Uh, it's just annoying. My vision is blurred. I'm, I have... I have relied my entire life on my right eye for vision because my left eye, when I was a kid, some of you probably had this issue too, I had to dress like a pirate because my left eye Mm. was one of those little lazy eyes. Mm -hmm. So to retrain it, I had to cover up my right eye and it drove me crazy, not just because of the muscle having to be retrained, but because my left eye is a little weaker at near, I can see better at distance with my left eye. But uh, for near, for reading and doing close work in the house, I've relied on my right eye for a long, long time. It's the worst of the two eyes. So it it is blurry almost all the time. It really drives me nuts. Mm. I can't read for very long at a time. I've got blue blocker uh, readers coming in today or tomorrow, I think today, that I hope help. But the, the big problem is that if you've ever had an infection of your oil glands in your eyes, your eyelids have oil glands to keep everything lubricated. Um, it works with the tears, the mm-hmm. tear ducts in your eyes, and it makes sure that your eyes stay nice and glistening. You do not want your conjunctiva and your cornea to dry out. Yeah, yeah. You just don't. And the oil glands are there for that. Uh, they can get stopped up. And that's what happened to mine. They got plugged up. They just didn't work anymore properly, and they got infected with staph. So that's what's going on. So thank you very much for your prayers. I'm on uh, antibiotics, and once those are all done, I'll get checked out again. And once this is all cleared up, we'll find out why the glands got, you know, plugged up in the plugged first up place. in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we pray for that. Uh, May just be old. <laughs> We're old. Yeah, I just saw a study that um, shows that aging is not a steady linear 
I guess you'd call it uh, degeneration or regression. No, sometimes you just fall off a cliff. Yeah, and they've identified those cliffs, one in your 40s and another in your early 60s. Mm-hmm. Well, which, I'm long past that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm right in the middle of that second one. It's like, <laughs> that explains a lot. My, my, oh, I know. My legs have suddenly gone, you know, all wobbly. Um, so trying to, trying to work on some exercises for the, the legs to try to get some strength back. I really noticed it when we went to Israel last spring. And uh, we'd been there four years earlier, 2019, walking on some uh, uh, rocks at the, the site of Gilgal Rephaim. There, there are a lot of small boulders out there. It's on, it's on a basalt plain, basically, which is um, rock that was thrown up by a volcano years ago. That, that area has some uh, extinct volcanoes. And I just thought, man, these rocks weren't this wobbly when we were here four years earlier. No, I'm pretty sure that they rearranged them between our visits. Lubricated uh, them or something. They did. I just got up and closed our, our door the small door here in the barn because the light was streaming in and Mm -hmm. I'm really super sensitive to the light. So even that little bit, even these overheads are bothering me a bit, but Mm. we do need those. Yeah. Test lighting, you do need to have that kind of important. I'm sort of sitting in the dark in the house. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So anyway, that's uh, that's sort of a natural progression and there there are, I, I guess, certain supplements and exercises you can do to help stave things off. But as my dad used to say, when you hit 60, the warranty expires and parts start to break. And oh, like, they do. But I you am know, living that out right now. I do not want to live forever in this no, body. Uh, I look forward to a brand new one. So these yeah. little problems, these bumps along the way, this is minor in the scheme of things. I got to tell you, we've got friends, and I know we'll get to the news stories in a minute. We've got friends that are dealing with quite a number of them. Grab that hat for me. Sure. That'll help a lot. Yeah. Um, my whispering pony's cap. I wore it out to the barn so I could make it from the house to the barn in the, in the bright lights. I'm like those, those gremlins. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, that helps a lot. I just shielded out the overhead task lighting. Um, we have friends who are dealing with big eye issues, big eye issues. And the, those, those individuals are, they're, they're just dealing with some tough stuff. Some of them are undiagnosed. Others are under diagnosis and they're under care. I'm not going to name names, Mm -hmm. but many of the people that you and I have talked with in our milieu who are in ministry, who try to have eyes to see spiritually, Mm -hmm. the enemy's hitting them in the eyes. I know. I know. This is really a strange coincidence, if you're a coincidence theorist. It's a good half a dozen to a dozen people that I can, would name, but I'm not going to. Right. Very strange very strange. Let mm-hmm. me just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. So pray for all those who are in ministry who are trying to see spiritually. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when I pray about this, and, I, and again, I know many of you are praying for me, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I know, I believe in prayer, and you don't always see an immediate answer, but when the answer comes, it's big. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for that big answer. <laughs> I, I Seriously, I am. And I ask you to pray for these other people just you don't need to know their names just ask the lord knows who they are the lord knows who they are and i know many of you listening you are dealing with those parts that are no longer under warranty Mm -hmm. or some of you may be really young or you've got kids or grandkids who are suffering with physical ailments and in some cases other types of ailments yeah um emotional um mental sometimes that may or may not have a spiritual root so we just want you to know that Derek and I often pray for those unknowns. I pray for them every mm-hmm. night. Those who are suffering, and you know the need, Lord, I ask that your spirit work through my heart and my spirit to pray for them. Because I don't know their names and I don't know the needs, but you do. Right. And uh, we are called to pray for one another mm-hmm. and to lift up one another and to minister to one another. That, that's one of the most heartwarming things about our little app and the group that has... Uh, gravitated there because there are a lot of prayer requests and prayer needs that um, are, are lifted up there and people who are praying for um, one another through through that little group. And that is really, I mean, it, it's not even 500 people, less than 400 people even. But that, that, is, that is, that actually in many churches these days would be considered a decent congregation. Yeah. yeah. 500 people showing up on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, or a prayer meeting. Right. Imagine 500 people showing up at a prayer meeting. Can you 
picture how a church would change Mm -hmm. if 500 people came to prayer meeting amen and hit their knees right boy howdy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the world would be on fire well i mean you just had disciples who were on their knees praying look what happened then we'll we'll talk a little bit about that but uh, this the app it reminds me of something that uh our friend Sam Miller brought up at a conference in Nashville where I, I served as. Oh yeah. Way uh, back when. Yeah. Called myself servant of ceremonies instead of master of ceremonies. I think that's uh, better. Yeah. It was the, uh, the last day's conference in, in Nashville still have a poster from that conference hanging on the wall because some of the speakers there, just a wonderful gathering. Sam asked a question at a, at a Q and a session toward the end of the conference about, um, how we use technology, how we gather together in virtual catacombs, like the early church had to gather secretly in Rome when they were being persecuted by the uh, Roman Empire in the catacombs, you know, yeah. the places where the dead bodies were kept. Where are the virtual catacombs? I would suggest that our app and other gathering places like it are virtual catacombs yeah. because we are pulling together a group no, no, not we, excuse me. The, the Lord, Lord is pulling together a group through that electronic tool who might otherwise not have a, a church home, might not have anyone who is lifting them up and encouraging them and praying for them. And uh, so we, we are just humbled that uh, our little group, the Fellowship of the King, as, as you've mm-hmm. termed it, are gathering together through that uh, through that tool, and I will say again, if we've we've mentioned the name of this company many times, Subsplash, the company that puts this together. Most of the users of the app are physical churches, and they use it to connect small groups and Bible studies and so on, and post the pastor sermons online. It's a wonderful tool for all of that. But media ministries like ours, Skywatch TV, Prophecy Watchers, uh, Morningside, the Jim Baker Show, mm-hmm. uh, L.A. Marzuli, Doug Hamp, Ken Johnson. Uh, Casper McLeod. Just about everybody we know. They, Because we recommend this to everybody we know. If you want a tool to connect people virtually, both through mobile devices and through Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, Google TV. And that isn't going to break the bank. That isn't going to break the bank. Subsplash, God bless them. They're, what The value they offer for what we pay and through what your support makes possible is so powerful. Mm-hmm. It would cost 10 times that from we try to take advantage company. yeah we, we try to take advantage of as many of the tools as they've made available as possible because uh, it really is a wonderful thing I mean there's a Bible module in there an audio Bible with multiple translations you've got the King James the net the ESV and when we do a study as long as I remember to put the scripture tags in there it will then connect you to other studies and also other programs that we've done that relate to those scriptures. So it, it sort of helps kind of network things together. There's a powerful search tool in there. We had a question in the, in the app a few days ago um, after the, the uh, interview with Avi Lipkin that we posted, uh, my View from the Bunker program from a couple of weeks ago. Love to hear more from Avi. It's like, well, we've got other interviews with Avi in our archives, and you can find those by going to the search tool and search by speaker, then you can browse through and find all of the programs with your favorite speakers. Mm -hmm. So it's a really powerful tool that they've put together and they really make it affordable. I will tell you it is less than the cost of one 30 minute program on a local television station. And that's per month. Yeah. And it reaches the whole world on multiple platforms. Yeah. It's amazing. Anyway, we can't say enough good about subsplash and uh, thank you for engaging through that. Uh, messaging feature as far as i know because i've looked at i've asked other ministries are you using this and most of them are not because it uh it's again it's geared at for at, at churches mm-hmm. here's how your small group can connect and exchange notes with one another we're just using it differently yeah but you listener are taking advantage of it and we are very very humbled to see that interaction and that interconnection amen to that um I was trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to say before we dive into news. I'll I'll jump into the news, uh, and then we can decide whether or not I left anything out. (laughs) Um, Boy, I said to the cows coming home, and the reason I bring that up is because uh, avian flu H5N1 Mm -hmm. is still making the rounds of dairy farms um, in a number of states. There are a lot of states that are having state fairs right now, county fairs, and 
you have 4-H uh, clubs that bring in their various projects. They're almost always animals of some kind. Uh, so you will have steer judging, and the prize steer, you know, is usually bought by somebody, and that donation goes to the, either the family or to a worthy cause. And I always baked cookies <laughs> because we, mm-hmm. we, I grew up on a farm, but I didn't get into 4-H until we moved into the village. <laughs> yes, I lived in the village. It was, seriously, it's a village. It was not a town. It was a village. Mm-hmm. DuPont, it mm-hmm. was a village. Um, so actually, we lived sort of inside, didn't have a uh, cow anymore. So at that point, I joined 4-H, and I was involved in sewing and, and uh, baking and things like that. But there are lots of wonderful skills you can learn in those 4-H clubs. And those who are bringing in chickens and pigs and cattle of various kinds, they are now having to be very careful because it's easy to spread communicable diseases, animal to human, at these settings. Mm -hmm. And if a human comes in, say you've been working with your animal and your animal has given you a mild case of the sniffles and you don't realize it's X, Y, Z, you go to a big meet like this and you've spread it perhaps to your advisor and a couple of other friends and some family that come in to visit and then they take it home to theirs. Uh, Those things can spread easily. Here's the good news. Right now, the human version of H5N1, as it stands in the United States, Mm -hmm. is very mild. Very mild. It's like a mild cold. For that reason, it often gets mistaken. Um, But when it's isolated from the human, and there have only been maybe a dozen cases of human influenza in the the U.S. since this came around. these mild cases get missed, but those that are isolated and, and PCR'd, the, uh, it's showing up as this very same one that the cattle have. The cattle got it from who knows where. Could be from a pond where they drink and birds flew over it. Could be from mm. droppings mm-hmm. that the humans right. carry in on their shoes. It's hard to say. But it is spreading slowly. Now, with that in mind, understand that This is now in just about every mammal species across the type of species across the world that you can name. It's in cats. It's in dogs. It's in uh, cattle. It's in humans. uh, It's in marine animals. It's in uh, um, species like penguins. It's all over the globe, and Mm -hmm. it seems to be really spreading. Some, Some species are more susceptible at this time. Cats, for instance. Mm. It's 100% fatal in cats. Wow. 100% fatal. I've only found about 30 cases, but they've all died. Mm. It could be they died because they didn't go to the vet until the parents, you know, the mom and dad for the cat thought, we just can't get the cat better. Let's take it in because it starts out with uh, GI issues, not wanting to eat, throwing up, and cats do that all the time. And then sneezing. And then lots of sneezing, mm-hmm. and then really lethargic. And by the time they get into the vet, the cat's passed. Right. So 100% of the cases that have been identified, but it's possible that not all of the cases have been I don't identified. Know. And yeah. would they be able to treat it? I don't know. This yeah. is very, very early days for that kind of stuff. So what I'm saying is you're going to see more and more stories about H5N1 in the United States press. I see it a lot because I look for it. Mm-hmm. I have been watching H5N1 since 2004. Mm. And all of the various versions of the H5s, H3s, H, you know, uh, 8s, H, whatever the hemagglutinin is, I've been watching those and trying to see whether or not they cross species, whether they, that there's a zoonotic event that goes from animal to human. What we do know, and I mentioned this last week, I think, is that because humans can catch it from dairy cattle, that there's something about dairy cattle, and it seems to be the receptors, that there's a human type of receptor in their lung tissue as well as a cattle one. It may be because of that that they're able to spread it to us, Hmm. but that also makes them sort of another mixing vessel for viruses, much like pigs are. Mm -hmm. So far, it's not shown up in pigs. 
But on a related note, because I look at these zoonotic events all the time, and I look at what plague is breaking out here and what's happening over here and what mystery illnesses are coming up here that nobody's named yet. Been doing that since we, since I've known you. Since, yeah, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Um, M pox. Mm -hmm. They used to be called monkey pox. M pox. It's not for monkeys. It was just originally was isolated from a monkey. Um, M pox made the rounds here in the, in the West throughout certain demographics. And, because of that, it was sort of, okay, well, that demographic will all get smallpox vaccines, which sort of was like putting a screen door on a submarine. A submarine. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like you were protecting them, but it wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. In other words, some things got through. Um, or maybe an ill-fitting window, but it didn't, wasn't a perfect vaccine. Now there's an impox in Africa that is in the DRC, as well as a couple of cases in neighboring countries. And some of the countries have closed their borders with DRC because of this. Mm-hmm. Impox is awful. It has a, I mean, it's a smallpox type rash all over your body. Sometimes it goes into a black pox form where you can actually lose large portions of your skin. Mm. Um, It is 5% fatal in adults. This particular clade, Mm -hmm. in other words, this version of the virus, is 5% fatal in adults. And there have been many, many thousands of cases. And 10% fatal in children. This is not a fake disease. Yeah. This is a real disease. Impox, monkeypox, they used to call it, has been around for a long time. A long, long time. It didn't just appear when we learned about it over mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. So that's one that I'm taking a long, hard look at because it's already developed into a few cases in Europe because there's a lot of travel back and forth between parts of Africa and Europe, especially amongst Doctors Without Borders. Right. And there was a story this week that Mpox virus has been detected in wastewater in a couple areas of San Francisco. Yes. Now, whether or not it's the same clade, that's what I'm interested ah, in. Don't because know. it may actually harken back to that certain demographic I mentioned mm-hmm. earlier. Sure, yeah. Um, but the World Health Organization, I know that, look, if you don't trust them, I get it. I don't know how reliable all the doctors are on that because certain incentives can pass from one organization to another. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but I I would like to think because I went into science with good motives. I had a lot of friends who were in science for good reasons. I'd like to think if you climb up that chain and have a little bit of authority that you still have your good, good reasons Mm -hmm. for being in there. So I'm not going to just say, okay, you're all evil. I'm going to try to believe that at least some of them have really good intentions yeah. for humanity because the reason I'm bringing them up is because they just declared a public health emergency right. of international concern. And that means that all the world governments start to take a look at it, put a little bit of money aside in mm-hmm. case they, and start to, to, you know, okay, we need to buy some uh, PPE for high risk populations, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And they put a little bit of money into that smallpox vaccine that allegedly works against impox. But since this is a different clade, mm-hmm. it may not work at all. Right. And as you say, there is a level of distrust after the pandemic and what they did earlier this year with the amendments to the uh, international health regulations. I so agree with that. And that's, that's my reason for being really suspicious. Mm-hmm. This is on the heels of that vote. Right. Where the amendments were voted in. Mm-hmm. We need to take over the world because you people can't uh, remember to wash your hands or whatever. And it's- <laughs> theoretically, they go into effect next year. Right. Well, so we shall not see. not supposed to be in effect yet, but I think it, all of the, the various countries get to take a look at. Well, let's look at this one more time before we say, okay, yes, we're going to do this. What do we vote for again? 
Yeah, and it would be easier to ascribe good motives to WHO if they weren't trying to classify things like mis, dis, and malinformation as a an infodemic yeah, and, that- and, and, and claim that they should have the authority to manage information flow because well, bad information is infectious. Let me just say that may actually not be... You, you may not be able to follow that thread all the way back to the World Health Organization and lay the blame there. Hmm. I think they maybe get thrown under the bus. Could be. Because cause... they're given all authority. Mm-hmm. But that's not where all authority in the final kingdom lies. It doesn't rest no, with no. the World Health Organization. No, I, I think it's a, a multi-pronged, ironically, information assault or like psyop. Trident? Yeah, a uh, psyop or... Uh, yeah. What do they call it? Mil- military information support operation, a MISO. I, I think so. And, because uh, we and hear it from other organizations like UNESCO and also from progressives, liberals. We, we talked about uh, last week about the UK Metropolitan Police Commissioner wanting to extradite people from other countries for inappropriate posts on social media. Isn't that like, ridiculous? Come on. You don't even prosecute crime in your own country that are real crimes. Yeah. And yet you want to go after this in another country. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to stoke anger and provoke open rebellion. I think that's part of the enemy's plan. And by that, I mean the spirit enemy behind all of these. Um, Our natural inclination, mine at least, is to go after the human. Why you? you Mm -hmm. But ultimately, even though humans have free will, ultimately the spirits behind the scene are the ones, they're the ones who are really plotting all of this revenge against the, the almighty they're using humans as shields mm-hmm. and as hands and feet to get it done well uh we need to take a break and we come oh, back oh gosh we've got we really blathered we we really have yeah Sorry I, about I know that. we uh but but there are a couple of things we need to tell you about that will affect or have already affected you personally dear listener uh, a massive data breach that went unreported that is affecting literally billions, billions of people on this planet and um, a medicine in your, yeah. Y- yeah, your, your that's a big one. medicine cabinet that, that may contain benzene. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Benzene is, no. Yeah, well, we'll tell you about that after this. P.I.D. Radio continues. Archaeologists call it the world's oldest temple, Gobekli Tepe. But who were the guardians of Gobekli? I love that title. In fact, it's the title of Dr. Aaron Judkin's book, and he gets into that information. He is one of the world experts on Gobekli Tepe. There aren't very many of them. There aren't, and he's one of the few who will take a Christian look at Gobekli Tepe and try to analyze the spiritual forces behind this mysterious site. Why did our Stone Age ancestors spend so much time building this specifically for ritual purposes? And then burying it. And then burying it. It is a message in stone. And I tell you what, hundreds of archaeologists and experts have been trying to decipher this for a long time. I think Aaron may be onto something. Right. This is a 60-minute conversation that Aaron and I had about Gobekli Tepe. You can get it now at our special introductory price, 20% off. But this special offer is only available at our online store. What lies beneath? 20% off now at gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back to PID Radio. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we are so glad that you're still listening. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, we also want to remind you that as of this date, we are still going to go to Israel in November. That's November the 6th. November 6th to 13th. If you want an idea of what we saw when we were there in May, because the itinerary will be pretty similar We've got a, a, a one-hour presentation, a video talk, well, a video of a presentation that I gave at Harvest Revival Center in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, you should watch that video anyway. It's, it's really, really good. And they, they start did out nice, with information that everybody needs. Yeah, yeah, about the, uh, the origin of Israel. Mm-hmm. That is available at our streaming video site, gilberthouse.org slash video. It's available for free. You don't need to give us anything for that. Um, And of course, while you're there at the site, we've got other videos that you can rent or buy access to for as little as three bucks. Uh, uh, We we just figure that's a way to get stuff out 
overseas without having to charge shipping to or value added tax. But uh, anyway, so gilbethouse.org slash video. Yeah, it is. $25, $30 for one DVD. Right. So stream it, stream it in full HD. Uh, but again, that video will give you an idea of what we saw. We went to communities that were attacked on October 6th, saw the bullet holes in the walls of private residences. Civilians were targeted on October 6th. And was the world is uh, coalescing against Israel and its response to Hamas and whatever may happen in Lebanon with Hezbollah, which is even more ominous because Hezbollah is better armed. Their tunnels are in mountains. Mm. Uh, so they're really well protected. So tunnels are in mountains that they can drive trucks through. Yeah. These tunnels. I mean, these, I, these pictures of their tunnels, the videos, they remind me of the Nazi tunnels that you could drive three trucks abreast yeah. through the, yeah. that wide and that tall. It's, they, they've spent billions of dollars on this infrastructure. Where'd they get net money? They're, yeah. 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 Rhetorical. I, Iran and uh, well-meaning w- deluded Westerners. Mm. Anyway, we, uh, God willing, plan to go back in November to go to those sites again, to just uh, to, to spend some time visiting with wounded IDF soldiers recuperating, go to Hostage Square in Tel Aviv. We'll visit the important spiritual battleground sites like the Temple Mount, the Mount of Olives, uh, City of David, Western Wall, all of those places. We plan to go to Shiloh as well, which is where the red heifers are being kept. Um, by then, who knows what may have been done. We talked last week about the... Uh, rehearsal that was done with the uh, the cardboard cutout that was neither quote red unquote yeah. rehearsal it was it was neither red nor a heifer but the temple institute well uh, we, I we know, talked about it before come on yeah. i mean seriously have you guys read any of your stuff <laughs> this oh, is oh no it's fine it's white face no you can't do it no no it's fine it's, it's got the steer. wrong equipment no, yeah fine. it's 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 good enough Anyway, uh, more information and the latest information will always be at gilberthouse.org slash travel. And that also applies to our tour of Israel next spring. Again, still planning to go. It just a uh, lot obviously depends on what happens between now and then. And uh, Lipkin Tour is very good about accommodating us. During the lockdowns, we had to reschedule our tour four times. Yes. And uh, they had to refund uh, deposits from people who could not accommodate the new dates. So, so if you want to yeah. put down your deposit just to hold your spot, we're only going to take p- 10 people. But I will say this, if probably by October 1st, regardless, if we don't have 10 people, we can't go. Right. Which you'll also get your money refunded. Right. At that point. So if you're interested, gilberthouse.org slash travel. And there's a link there that'll take you to the Lipkin Tours website to put down your deposit. Um, well, uh, the big data breach. This this is a big story, especially because it was not reported. It uh, basically snuck through without anybody really um, knowing about it. And of course, I had the story up and then I switched screens. Why did I switch which, screens? Which story was that? The uh, one about the massive data breach. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, you go ahead. I'll find it. It was uh, some 3 billion names, 2.9 billion to be exact that um, $2.9 billion records, including social security numbers stolen in data, uh, data hack. Uh, yeah, there it US is. US DOD claimed it had allegedly stolen, the hacking group had allegedly stolen personal records of 2.9 billion people mm-hmm. from national public data. So national public data, this, uh, it's, um, There's a background check company called Jericho Pictures Incorporated, but their business name is National Public Data. Jericho Pictures? That's a weird name. Yeah, Jericho, but it's not spelled like the city. It's J-E-R-I-C-O. There's no H in there, so maybe Jerry something. Anyway. Oh, um, I see. The the report was first published by the uh, online news site called Mashable, which looks at tech news. Confidential data exposed and stolen most of the people involved in this cyber attack probably unaware that we're even involved because national public data allegedly collects data from non-public sources without consent. So mm. this w- came to light because national public data was sued. A plaintiff learned of it in July. An identity theft protection company alerted him that his data had been leaked on the dark web. Mm-hmm. This was back in April. Hackers posted the National Public Data database on a dark web forum wanting $3.5 million for it from a buyer. So we're talking full names, addresses, social security numbers, and personal details of both living and deceased relatives 
2.9 billion people. Mm. Bear in mind, there's only 8 billion on the planet. This is massive. It means your data, very likely, there's a, there's a very good chance that your data has been exposed. Probably. There, there are a few things you can do. One is in case the, the part of that data breach has been password information on your computer, run antivirus, update your passwords for accounts like your bank, email, uh, other services like PayPal, things like that. Yeah. Make sure that they're very strong. And don't use the same one over and over again. These are things that I do. So, yeah, me too. Uh, me yeah, too. so I'm bad. Here's a big one. Use multi-factor authentication. Right, right. Authentication, because that way if it is taken, then if it isn't just, it can be an obscure email address that you only use for that. Mm -hmm. It can be um, a phone number that belongs to, say, your mom or something. Um, I have it. I have two-factor set on everything. So I mm -hmm. get a, a phone. If, if I log in myself on a device that's not been logged into before with that, I get a notice on my phone. Yeah, text message comes in and you need yeah. to access, you, you, they'll send you a six-digit code or something and you've and got to punch it in. I'll tell you, I love our bank. I love our little small town bank because mm -hmm. we're constantly getting, did you guys buy this? Yeah, especially when it comes to the end of the month, uh, the subscribe and save stuff yeah, from Amazon. because why, anything why that's run? over a certain amount, uh -huh. did you guys buy this? Or, and even Fidelity, which is our credit card, mm -hmm. which if you travel a lot, you've got to have one. We always pay it off each month. But um, there are a lot of states now in some countries that will not accept your debit card. Right. So anyway, it uh, will sometimes contact you. and says, Did you do this? Are you buying things mm -hmm. in this country? <laughs> yeah. Or at this hotel? Right. Um, we found... It I forgot about this when we were last time we were traveling, when we were coming back from the go therefore conference, we stopped in Charlotte on the way back. That was our connection and went to get lunch. And I wanted to use our debit card just to, you know, oh, let's not put anything more on the credit card. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't do it. Cause uh, I forgot the Carolinas, North Carolina is a state that our bank will not allow our debit card to be used. Colorado, Texas yep. are yep. two others yep. and probably lots more. Those, those are just ones that we know about. Right. So, uh, but you're right. There, there are common sense steps that you can take. And yes, it's a hassle, but it's less of a hassle to mm -hmm. turn on a strong password that you probably can't remember. <laughs> and and two-factor authentication. Here's a crazy gotta, idea. Write it down on a piece of paper and put it someplace in a lockbox. Yeah. So you know where it is, mm -hmm. but it's not online. Yep. Yep. Because even if you're storing it in the cloud, which again, use the cloud a lot. Use Apple's iCloud for a lot of things to connect our devices. I'm just as guilty as anybody else yep. of these things because it's convenient. Right, right. But it also makes it more convenient for hackers. Yeah. So, you can also again, go to credit bureaus and have your credit check just to see if anybody else has used your social security number. Yep. There was also, by the way, another massive breach that took place uh, called Rock U 2024 just a few months ago mm -hmm. with... Um, 10 more than 10 billion user accounts that were exposed so well again more than that's more than the number of people on earth but you know some of us have multiple accounts at multiple websites so mm -hmm. yeah it, it th there's a good chance at some point some hacker somewhere has scooped up a bunch of data that includes you in it every now and then apple will send notice saying your password has been part of a data breach yeah. and i'm like oh yeah okay i'll get to it later but yeah need to need to address that yeah. because uh it would be really bad to have well, have our stuff taken and, and knocked offline because somebody stole our passwords and changed the login info. Yeah. And it's, or oh, if, gonna... hey, here's an idea. What if somebody steals your phone? Yeah. And that stuff's still on your phone. Mm-hmm. So if they can get into your phone, then they can get all that stuff. Right. Um, yeah, we need to be better about that. You we, we do. Yeah, we, we, are, we are not great. Um, by the way, if I were going to put on a conspiracy tinfoil hat right now, I'm wearing a hat, mm -hmm. my Whispering Ponies hat. Line it with foil. That way no one will know. I could, maybe I did. <laughs> maybe that's why I can't think anymore. I didn't look in there. Oh, well. Um, if I were to put on my hat, I might look at all these data breaches and think, you know, somebody will come along and say, here's a way to have a unique identifier yep. and it will never, ever, ever be breached. Mm -hmm. And if you sign up today, you get... 10,000 quad loots. Right. To start right. out your own little protected account 
with this identifier. We'll just embed this rice grain sized RFID it's chip. It's not even that big. It's so tiny. No, you no, never it's, it's, it's got to go in your right hand. Got to go in your right hand. Or you could take the forehead one. Doesn't it just say in the hand of the forehead? Um, eh, well, let me look. Let me I'm look. Just thinking that the fallen realm, their left hand path. That is true. Let me uh, let me check that out. But yes, you, you know where we're going with this, Court. Oh, the, yeah. uh, the Revelation 13, Mark of the Beast sort of thing. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Let's, 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 there we go. So we mark on the right hand oh, well or done, the forehead. Honey. You win. Ding, 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 ding. You win this round. All right. You win the hand. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Mr. Uh, well, uh, check your medicine cabinet. Please there, do. Yeah. Because not for data breaches, it was no, nope, but it was revealed this week that certain uh, generic brands of Mucinex are found to contain benzene. Yeah, it, this is a, a product that helps you to expel uh, mucus that's in your lungs when you've right. got an infection or you're just fighting a bad cold, chest cold. Right, and you and I've used it in the past. It really does help. Yeah. Now this is just, this does not apply to the brand name brand version of Mucinex. Mucinex it's, is clean. That's fine. Right. But uh, the FDA, believe it or not, the Food and Drug Administration what? allows allows for the inclusion of Mucinex in certain medicines. And so uh, they were generally regarded as safe? I guess. Um, the, the, the brand name medicine, which is made by a company called Rickett, Rickett Binkeiser, uses a benzene-free carbomer. Mm-hmm. Carbomer, or whatever you pronounce it. Our yeah, generic versions sold by CVS, Walmart, Target, and Walgreens. They're store brand versions. Mm-hmm. The cheaper alternative use a cheaper carbomer containing benzene to achieve the same 12-hour extended release effect. Despite international warnings, the U.S. still allows benzene and has allowed benzene in drugs for decades. Yep. And uh, test, this is coming to light because tests have revealed that in some of these drugs, the levels of benzene are dangerously high. It is a carcinogen. So, As with many things in this world, that shouldn't be in our food or our medicine or, right. or in dyes. Or but it's stuff. cheaper. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a, about a $4 difference in the cost between the store brand and Mucinex. But by paying the additional for the Mucinex, you're getting the benzene-free uh, guaifenesin. Now we've got some generic guaifenesin in our medicine. Yeah, I've got to go take yeah, so a look. We have to and take see a look at that and see right, exactly. The FDA had announced plans to phase out to phase out instead of just saying, "Hey, this is a carcinogen." Why are we putting this benzene? It's it's a derivative of the petroleum refining process. It's it's not very healthy. It is not, but it's not something you want to eat. They were going to phase out benzene by 2025, but the deadline was extended to 2026 because the pharmaceutical industry pushed back on it and said, no, it'll cost us more. Good night. So okay. guifenesin, which is, uh, again, it's a, uh, um, an, an expectorant, basically mm-hmm. helps loosen yeah. your, the mucus in your lungs and, and so you can it's cough it out. a commercial where you see the little bit of glob, glob that's sitting right. there in a, wheel, in a, in a an easy chair right. reading the paper. Right. And you want to cough him out. Mm-hmm. Um, prob- you don't want him living down there. Yeah. You know, it probably, I think, is a good rule of thumb to go for name brands. I know it costs more, but, and we do this with uh, Benadryl. I, oh, I agree. I, oh, yes, we use it with Benadryl because the, uh, the, the stuff that's used to buffer it, to cut the actual active ingredient mm-hmm. uh, so that you have a pill <laughs> in the generics, really gives me restless leg syndrome. Mm. I, I tend to suffer that from that once in a while anyway, but I will have it majorly if I take certain generics of that. So we always get the, uh, the name brand of that, and I'm not saying that you need to go buy Benadryl, but it's good to have when you travel overseas, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you never know when you're going to run across something that is, causes an allergic reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and it does. It went, Tylenol. It, I like the gener- the uh, brand version of that better mm-hmm. than the generics for the same reason. Mm-hmm. You never know what is in there that is the non-inactive ingredient. Especially because so many of those generics come out of China. And here's the other thing. It might be produced here, 
but the ingredients the, the, yes, come from China. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, always know what's in your medicine cabinet. A um, couple of geopolitical things to mention. Ukraine has been getting a lot of attention for its surprise invasion of the Kursk region of Russia that began on the 6th of August. They've, they've pushed in, and as of this recording, it's being reported they've captured about 400 square miles of territory there. And, uh, of course, the news reports here in the West are typically very pro-Ukraine. It's and, and, 20 miles by 20 miles. Yeah. So when you look at a map of Ukraine from, like, the Institute for the Study of War, which is a neocon think tank, just so you know, but uh, their war maps show territory under Russian control, territories that are being contested, territory captured by Ukraine. Mm -hmm. the, that little bubble that Ukraine has pushed into the Kursk region, which has forced 120,000 people to flee. So it's, that's, it's not, you know, this is not a nothing. Burden. It matters to them. It matters a lot. But compared to what Russia captured since the war began last February, it's, it's a blip. It, this, I think, this is how I'm taking it. Con which is not how it's being reported in the Western media. The Russians are scrambling. They were completely caught by surprise. Putin is, his grip on power is weakening. We've been hearing that for the last couple of years. Um, it really is just a small bit of territory compared to what Russia's captured. Mm -hmm. But what is perhaps significant is that in the city of Kursk is a nuclear power plant. Mm. which is the third largest in Russia, and it's the fourth largest generator of electricity in all of Russia. So if Ukraine can take that and shut it down, that would be a huge blow. I don't think, based on what I've read over the last 24 hours, it looks like the offensive is starting to stall. Um, I, I think this is Ukraine's battle of the bulge moment. You remember toward the end of World War II when the, Russian, or the Germans mounted a last gasp offensive to punch they punched a hole in the allied lines mm -hmm. but it it didn't last because they were just outnumbered in terms of man uh, men and materiel weapons and ammunition and I, that's the case for ukraine right now they are they are overwhelmed when it comes to manpower and ammunition and weaponry this is also an information war there's a pr move yep. taking place to try to keep the west funneling money into ukraine right there have been, so, I mean, so many hundreds of billions of dollars have gone into Ukraine. You have to ask, can you tell me why they haven't won? Yeah, yeah. So the, where's all the money going? The much vaunted summer campaign last summer, which was supposed to push Russia back out of the eastern provinces, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, didn't happen. It just, mm. it fizzled because Russia just has an overwhelming superiority in numbers both of men and weaponry that they can bring to bear there was a proposal floated by the united states to get u.s weapons manufacturers defense industries to open factories inside ukraine so that we could shorten the supply chain to get weapons to ukraine just saw a report a couple of days ago that um, american corporations that make bombs and bullets don't want to work in ukraine because it's too corrupt you can't make any money there. And plus, the factories would probably get bombed. Well, yes, but they could put the factories in Poland. And draw Poland into the war, which well, there are some who believe luck. the Poles Poland's want Poland's already in it. Well, yeah. Well, our, but, and hey, the other thing is that... Well, the reality is we all are, yes. Yes, but there are tanks that were supplied by the U.S., tanks supplied by Great Britain, mm -hmm. tanks supplied by France. Germany. Germany. That are going into Russia mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And... and if Putin wants to, he can say, well, clearly, I'm now at war with the U.S., with Germany. He did this and week. The German, well, German, I mean, Russian well, I defense missed ministers. that because yeah. he, well. They're defense. basically saying it is, it is a proxy war, but NATO is at war. Russia is at war with NATO. And it's because we've been funneling all of this money and weaponry. And we've got boots on the ground there. Oh, they're just advisors. I know, but yeah. here's the thing. They've been someone other than Putin, some spokesman or someone from his you know, circle, have been saying we're at war with NATO from almost the first day. Yeah. The day will come, and I think it's rapidly getting here, when he really will say, I am at war with NATO. Mm -hmm. Or NATO is going to be so busy down in the Middle East. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, Turkey is part of NATO. That is correct. 
Yeah, I think this is going to wind up fracturing the NATO alliance mm-hmm. because Turkey is not going to want to cut its relationship with uh, with Russia. It's <clears throat> yeah, tangled webs. Th- there also are stories floating around here in the United States about requiring military registration for young women as well as young men. We don't really think about it because it's been a thing ever since. Well, ever since I turned eighteen, even mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was back. Back then in Tickety too, where when you hit 18 as a young man, you've got to register for selective service. You don't, th- there is no draft, but your name is in on file somewhere. I think it started in the, the early 60s or late 50s or something. Yeah. It's it, been it around was, for a long time. Yeah. So even though the draft was done away with after the Vietnam War, uh, so we've got an all volunteer military, you still have to register as a young man. And now there are some in Congress who are pushing to get young women to volunteer as well. And I think when the rubber hits, that rubber hits the road. And parents are looking at their their daughters having to potentially go and fight in Ukraine. I think that's when the American people will say, okay, look, we've sent over $100 billion worth of stuff to Ukraine already. I'm not sending my daughter to. Mm-hmm. As much as we talk about equity and inclusivity and diversity, I think that for a lot of parents will be the final straw. Well, Israel does have women soldiers. It does. Has had all along. And because women were fighting during the lead up to 1948. Right. right. Um, That did not go well for those women whose soldiers who were taken captive. No. Any more than it went well for the civilian women that were taken captive. Right. So if you put a female soldier on the ground in a Middle Eastern context. Yep. First of all, I'm sorry. Any war context. I just do not think most. You're just physically different. Yeah. Warfare means you take a lot of heavy equipment with you. Mm-hmm. You're in tough circumstances. You have to move that heavy equipment on your legs, and in some cases, crawling along the ground, mm-hmm. sometimes for tens and tens of miles. And then you have to be strong enough at the end of that to fight. Mm-hmm. No, no. That's hard enough on our young men. Don't be asking young women to do that. And besides, the reason you, a lot of the reason women aren't that haven't done it historically is because they have the babies. Mm-hmm. And if you can have one guy and 50 women. <laughs> as long as you got the one guy, you're okay. Mm-hmm. As long as he's shooting. But other than that, <laughs> not shooting yeah, blanks. Yeah. But in other words, you don't need a lot of men to keep your population going. Right. You need the women. You yeah. need the women. And, and you're right. The stories that have come out about... Um, the way women who were captured on October 7th were treated is, is horrific. One, one of the great um, humiliations suffered by Israel, and, and this is really a black mark on the IDF, was a unit along the border of women who were unarmed and thus undefended. And they were overwhelmed and taken by Hamas and, and not treated well. So... <sighs> Yeah, somebody, somebody's head going to have to roll, and there have been some uh, in the IDF hierarchy that have um, resigned over this. Mm-hmm. It is not clear yet that Netanyahu politically survives this, although the most recent polls show that Likudin is now ahead of Benny Gantz's Blue and White Party for the first time since mm-hmm. last October. Yeah, so I know. Benny the Magician, they call him, because he always finds a way to survive. But as our friends over there tell us, he, Netanyahu, is an outsider, and... While there are conspiracy theories that posit that Netanyahu must have known because this failure of the IDF, failure of intelligence was so egregious, it must have been deliberate. Our friends over there tell us that the IDF doesn't tell Netanyahu everything. They only tell him what they think he should know. Well, I'll say again, it's a I deep state thing. Nearly every military is that way. They yeah. don't tell their temporary leader what is really going on. Right, right. In the United States, it's really a military intelligence complex. Mm-hmm. That was one of the takeaways from that book, The Deep State, or The Deep, rather, The Secret War Against the Jews yep. by um, John Loftus and Mark Ahrens, highly recommended, published 30 years ago, but it shows how elements inside the U.S. and U.K. governments actively worked against the official policies of those governments to try to prevent the state of Israel from coming into being and then to allow Israel to be destroyed by its Arab neighbors because the Arabs had the oil and we really work for the oil companies and the banks, not for the American people or the British people. It's shocking, but that's true. 
The presidents don't always know. The prime ministers don't always know what their governments are doing. Their intelligence services are sometimes operating on their own for their real constituencies who are the guys with the money. But let's remember, the Lord is still in control of the world. He still knows where everything is going. He is still working everything together for good according to his purposes. He's seen the end from the beginning. Yep. He's laughing with yes. derision he at what sits these... sits in the heavens laughs. He's laughing at the fallen realms, plots and plans and devices and the way they're working through this little cabals of humans. And he has already out, ma- out uh, matched them mm-hmm. for wit in yeah. many ways. But he's already won the game. They just don't see it. Right, right. He's operating outside of time. So he already knows what their moves are going to be. So what I'm saying yeah. is put your trust in him. Yep. You know, okay, pay attention to what's going on in the world. Pay attention to what's going on, you know, with your bank account, things like that, and what's in your medicine cabinet. Try to eat well, but don't fret. Do not fret. Rest in the Lord. Have patience in him, and he shall give thee thy heart's desire. Mm -hmm. And we all desire to see Jesus again. That's coming. Amen. That is coming. Well, we got a question. Um. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing. Sorry. Yeah, I know. That's all right. I can see the clock. (laughs) Uh, Just one final note. Uh, We're still waiting for whether or how Iran is going to respond to Israel. And Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, said on Friday that he expects the U.S. and Britain and France to respond with an offensive strike against Iran. Preemptive? If Iran attacks. Oh, so if okay. Iran attacks, it would not just be a Israel responding, a retaliatory strike. But none of those three nations, the U.S., the U.K., or France, had said, yeah, we'll do that. Katz may have jumped out ahead of the game there. Well, Hurting Katz, uh, ben, Benjamin Netanyahu's <laughs> tough, tough job. Yeah. So uh, well. they, the readout of the meeting later, because uh, Katz was meeting with the foreign ministers of uh, the U.K. and France, he may have spoken a little too soon but we, or we will see. he may have told you will say this could be could be but the readout kind of walked that back a little bit omitted the statement uh about uh mm. so we we shall see but there as you say again of, there's a lot of high weirdness the lord has foreseen all of this and so we just ask he you has. to pray for He's the peace of jerusalem He's even the question we're going to answer yes um i haven't this is uh, from ashley oh hi ashley Uh, She writes, I wanted to know, doing the fellowship Bible study every Sunday and speaking to you all on the message board, is that the same as assembling together as the church? Well, I'm going to give you a multi-pronged answer. (laughs) One is the word church, ecclesia. Mm -hmm. Now, this is getting into today's headlines. Did you know, Derek, that the Church of England has decided in many cases to omit the word church? I saw that story. It's too yeah. offensive. Saw the headline, but too I didn't. dividing. Too really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we want people to feel welcome. The word <laughs> church turns you off. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so what are they calling it? The, uh, the church? Congregation, the, fellowship. The coffee shop of England instead of church shop. of England? I mean, it's in the name. Church of England. I know. I know. Uh, yes, I know. C, yeah, well, okay, the C. Company what, of England. Company, yeah, we need to find another C. England, uh, okay, well, the, gathering the, place of no, England. No, we got the acronym. It's got to be a C. Coffee shop of England. Coffee would work. Yeah. Coffee house of England. Uh, no, what to oh, think Oh, we drink that. tea. No, that's no, no good. Rest. Yeah. Let's change it from C of E to D O E. <laughs> or the... Don't! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, yes, yeah. the word church. Um, we are admonished to never forget the gathering of ourselves together. And I do think that in a virtual way, we are all gathered throughout history and throughout time and throughout space by the Lord, because we are all part of his body, regardless of when you lived or where you live. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I think that it does form that gathering together. But I can tell you from those people who go to a physical church on Sunday that meets their, really meets their needs spiritually, or who just go to a conference now and then, Mm -hmm. who are in the same room with fellow believers, and you actually touch 
there is the Lord has wired us for touch. Mm. The Lord has wired us to hug on one another and and to look each other in the eye and to be in that space where you feel connected. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to feel alone. Yeah, yeah. When all you have is a virtual connection. But if that is all that is open to you, mm-hmm. for example, back in the day, we called them shut-ins. Right. You couldn't get out of the house because you were bedridden or chair-ridden or whatever, and so you couldn't go to church. We'd bring church to you. Mm-hmm. I was in part of many uh, small groups. We would go and we'd sing, and we'd leave back when cassette tapes, tapes were a thing. We'd leave cassette tape of the sermon, or the pastor would just go and he would visit. Visiting those who are shut in, that is a big ministry. Yeah. And it can be done online. But if you know of people locally in your area and you're feeling lonely yourself and you have the physical ability to get out, maybe try visiting some. Go to a mm-hmm. nursing home. Yeah, yeah. You know, just ask the staff. Say, look, I, all I want to do is just go and pray with people or go and read. You know, just say, volunteer. is it okay yeah. if I volunteer to be someone who goes from room to room and just reads with people? Yeah. I, I agree. We, we've never seen our weekly Bible study as a substitute for a physical gathering. No. We we get a lot of the church experience just through our responsibilities and friendships at Skywatch TV. Mm-hmm. So we're we're in so a that's sort of our church. Yeah, we're in a unique situation. But we started doing the the weekly Bible study back in 2014 and uh yeah, we're just a month away from 10 years of doing this. Uh September 11th, I 2014. I feel so- Oh, <laughs> I've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. Somebody get me a cup of coffee. That um, came from questions we kept getting asked at conferences. People yeah. saying, can you recommend a good church? Because we don't have one near us that uh, does verse by verse exegesis. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why we do that every Sunday. But uh, you're, you're right. There is something really joyous about um, getting together and hugging on one another, praying with one another. Which is why we can go to these conferences, especially the prophecy conferences, which, okay, here's what the Bible tells us about the imminent end of the world as we know it. And yet, people at those conferences are not fearful. Joyful, laughing. Joyful, laughing. Yes, the end of the world is coming. Massive war ends at uh, Jerusalem. Uh, death, destruction, nuclear, what, and, and yet people are joyful. Not that we're voyeurs looking forward to watching the world blowing up around us not at all because we no. know there will be a lot of suffering that comes out of this but james says to consider that all joy the right the the, the pressure applied to us by the enemy mm-hmm. means we're getting in their way yes and it refines you yeah yeah like uh, silver in the refiner's fire like steel being alloyed mm-hmm. to become stronger so um Does this count the same as assembling together as the church? I guess the answer is sort of a yes and no. This, I guess, is a supplement. It's not not a perfect fit. No, no. It's uh, an apple compared to an orange. But if we can supplement what what you're getting from a physical gathering through our verse-by-verse exegesis and the, the kind of a strange divine council worldview, only strange to us in the 21st century because most of us weren't taught it, this is not, would not be strange at all to the first century church. That's so true. Um, and PID Radio, Gilbert House Fellowship, all the things we do, that app, yeah. benzene free. <laughs> benzene free. Yes. So 100% we can say without fear of contradiction, no benzene was used in the making of this app. No, so. we've talked about it, but we did not yeah. apply it. It is not part of the app. Yeah. It will not uh, harm you. Feel free to toss questions at us. We've got sections in the app, in the messaging section, questions for Sharon, questions for Derek, even in the open forum session, throw those questions out Mm -hmm. and we will strive to answer on PID Radio and the Gilbert House Fellowship. Yeah, I will say that um, I sometimes see that there's a section called announcements by the Gilberts or announcements. Something like that, yeah. But it's a place where actually Derek and I are supposed to be posting things as announcements. (laughs) And so I see a lot of miscellaneous stuff going in there. Uh, It would be helpful if that could just be reserved for Derek and myself to put announcements. That way you can go there. And if you see there's something new in the announcements, you know we've got something to announce. Right, right. 
that's that's the purpose of that's that particular the purpose forum. of that but uh, anyway thank you for making use of that uh, and again especially the prayer requests section because that is uh, that is one way that uh, we are gathering as a sort of virtual ecclesia virtual that is congregation so true. and by the way speaking of announcements um the red wing saga first three books are now audiobooks now they are ai voiced and the reason I chose that is because I was offered a beta program. Mm -hmm. We were offered a beta program through uh, Kindle Books, and uh, uh, it was an, a very quick, in other words, just go through, listen to the voice, and decide which one you want. And then within 72 hours or less, it was published as an audiobook, as opposed to your waiting the next Five years until I'm finished writing all these books and I've got time to go back and actually read through them or we hire it done and it costs a lot of time and money. Right, I gotta right. tell you, hiring talent, really good talent is expensive. Yeah. It's, it's easier and cheaper for us to just voice it ourselves. We don't have the time. I'm mm -hmm. afraid we really don't. So for those of you who've actually told me, you know, I've gotten feedback from you. Thank you. First of all, for trying it, and because if you have Kindle Unlimited, sorry, if you have Audible, mm -hmm. then you know that you have so many free ones every month that are included with your subscription, and so it's zero cost. You get the audiobook for free. Yeah. Uh, so why not? Um, and also, if you buy the actual Kindle book or the printed book, it's an add-on for a various, very small additional price. So the audiobook is available, and many of you have told me you love the voice. I got to tell you, this British female voice, she did a great job. Fits the AI the, did a great job. Fits perfectly. And well, as long as she's not adding to the content by saying, oh, and by the way, I just like to tell you, you're special. <laughs> because you're listening to this, you're special. So, yeah. Don't no, stop no, no, no ad living. <laughs> no no ad living. No, please, no ad living. Yeah. You know, those of you who go to X, um, if you have a premium, and which I did, just it's a, an annual fee, just so I could have the blue check mark. Blue check mark, but there are some other perks that go along with yeah. it. You get Grok for free, which is the AI. You can ask all sorts of stuff. There's a fun mode on Grok. I love that. Yeah, I love the stuff where you get the day's big headlines from Grok, and Grok has some of the a wicked sense of humor. Yeah, it's it's like the Babylon Bee. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's yeah. really good. Uh, breaking news! Breaking news! Uh, yeah. oh, I, my my first novel, The God Conspiracy, is now out on Audible as well. Which voice did you choose? I chose a male uh, American voice. Uh -huh. Um, so it uh, seemed to to fit that better than a than a, a British accent. Of course, I don't know if you've got a male British accent. Uh, there was AI not. Voice. I was yeah. going to choose a male British, but there wasn't yeah. one. More more of an adult sounding. Um, male voice so that that is also available on audible we we will add links in our store so if you go to gilberthouse.org slash store on those novels the link to the audible versions will be added to those books uh later today yeah and thank you very much by the way as we said uh, last week in armageddon strain and uh winds of evil are now available not only as printed books in our new publication with the brand new jeffrey martis covers on them mm -hmm. but also as kindle books they're not audible yet. They're not because what, what Amazon is doing is they've offered a beta on Kindle books that have sold well. Mm, and mm -hmm. they've sold well because of you guys. So thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have to uh, get Iron Dragons uh, up there as well. See, I'll have to check first to see if it's, uh, see if it's eligible. Mm. Not sure. Well, we'll find oh, out. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'll so work on that today. thank you for that one too. So, yes. So you've been asking for audiobook versions. There are early editions that I recorded almost 20 years ago of The God Conspiracy and Iron Dragons that are available on Audible. Mm -hmm. um, recorded and they're for free. And, and they're available for free because these were recorded for a website called Patio Books back in 2004, 5, 6, somewhere in there. Weren't they um, bought out by... They, I think they sold all of their content to Audible, which is why Audible has these. Ah, gotcha. Um, which is why they can't charge for it yep. because... Yeah. One one of our uh, one one of our folks on the app pointed out that the uh, those books were there. I'm like, how did they get there? Well, it's you reading it. If you it, want to hear Derek read them, then yeah. then there you go. But these are older editions. They've been modified and edited for the newer editions that we republished here recently. Right. So, I did not 
modify Armageddon Strain and Winds of Evil because I wanted them to be in the original condition mm-hmm. because some of those things have come to pass. <laughs> yeah, and I also drew on the Armageddon Strain for the God Conspiracy. And, so you know, I didn't yell at you either, points. you know, for drawing all over it. I said, look, this is a cute little horsey you've drawn here. Yeah, but, you know. use your own crayons next time. <laughs> These uh, are mine, the big fat ones. <laughs> oh, it's the box uh, with the built-in sharpener. That was really I know, great. I know. Well, again, we are so delighted to get to share this blather with you guys. And we're sorry that we spent so much time on blathering that we've missed some of the time for stories. But story time will be... You know, maybe you'll get some story time in my new podcast. I'm putting together a podcast called, yeah. which I think is going to be now in September sometime, called The Armored Sheep. And uh, I I finally just put together my own graphic for it. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey Martis, uh, I talked to him about it, and he was going to do it. But I, Jeffrey, God love you. You are so incredibly busy with Defender Projects. Mm-hmm. I get it. And everybody else has figured out how good your covers are. So exactly. when, when people ask, who did your covers? And we tell them, we think afterward, darn, why did we give his name out? Yeah, exactly. Well, he needs to, he can use the word He's, anyway. He, yeah. he is, as with many graphic artists, you know, who are reasonably priced and extremely talented. Mm-hmm. Trust me, Jeffrey, this is a, a labor of love for him because... He does this almost like a ministry. He doesn't charge nearly as much as he should. Jeffrey's going to bump up our prices that, next time for saying that. <laughs> well, but he could charge more. Well, well easily. worth it. Well worth it. Yeah. So I, I put this one together. I've got some minor chops, but not Marta's chops. <laughs> a Land couple. Chops. Of, there we go. Yeah. A couple of conferences to tell you about. I'll be in North Dakota the first weekend in September, September seventh and eighth for the Pitchfork and Ho gathering. This is a small. Well. Actually, they had hundreds of people there last year. Yeah. It, it really, it, the Eagles Club in Valley City is really big. Mm-hmm. And they've got it set up for that weekend where farmers and homesteaders, small farmers, will, will come and uh, exchange ideas. Uh, there'll be seminars on best practices. And then a couple of crazy Christians, uh, me and Doug Hamp, Dr. Doug Hamp, coming up from Colorado. And we'll be speaking there that weekend. I'll be speaking on Saturday afternoon, September 7th, Sunday afternoon, September 8th talking about uh, our forthcoming book, The Gates of Hell, and The Secret History of Israel. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really good. Yeah. I'm so glad Doug Hamp is going to be up there. One of these days, we need to have a conference that is just Doug's. Hamp. The Doug's. Woodward. Krieger. Yeah, we, we know. Van Dorn. We probably know a dozen guys in ministry whose first name is Doug. Yeah. Or it could be all, you know, either Doug's or Derek's. Well, it could the be, D's. could or, or could, we could make it Dugs and Mondos. Yeah, there are a lot of Mondos too. <laughs> Gonzalez, so, De La you? Vega, yeah. Yeah. Well. But yeah, uh, and in December. The Christmas in Bramson conference. This is the Prophecy Watchers conference coming to the uh, Chateau on the Lake. A beautiful hotel overlooking Table Rock Lake in Bramson. But uh, besides a great lineup of speakers like L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Billy Crone, Ken Johnson, Patrick Wood. Looking forward to meeting him face-to-face. Brandon Holthouse, Josh Peck, Mondo Gonzalez, me, uh, Terry James, Doug Hershey, uh, Larry Allison. It's it's just an amazing... Olivier Melnick. um, Looking forward to meeting him as well. So this will be September, or rather December 5th through 8th at the the Chateau on the Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got information at our website. If you go to our website, look for upcoming events or go to our app go to the calendar section and then upcoming events there's a link to the website which is branson christmas prophecy conference.com or you can get there from prophecywatchers.com that will be um uh, just a wonderful wonderful gathering 22 speakers and uh, we are looking forward to uh, taking part in that also a a virtual conference called inspiring women coming from here the watchman in october yeah first weekend in october yes sharon will be speaking as part of that october 4th 5th and 6th virtual uh, presentations from sharon from vicky joy anderson tracy tennant heidi begley uh uh, leslie johnson stan johnson's wife uh, lisa keys jennifer crate sharon cluck and then on sunday there will be a q a with speakers Mm-hmm. So you sign up for the conference, then a Sunday afternoon, you can interact with these uh, women um, in real in time. Real time yeah. yeah. So the Inspiring Women virtual webinar 
October 4th, 5th, and 6th, and information registration at hearthewatchmen.com. Yep. So lots of things going on. Remember, if you want to go to Israel, please go ahead and put your you know deposit down, and, and uh, then we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. Amen to that. Um, Gilbert House Bible Study tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. It is Iron and Myth, episode 32. Ah. Dr. Judd Burton rejoins the panel. He's uh, got his technical issues resolved. So Doug Judd and uh, Brian Godala, Doug Van Dorn, um, with uh, with another interesting round of, of uh, discussion. Episode 33 is coming up next month. What are you going to talk about? Mount Hermon. Oh, of course. Yes. Of course. It's on the 33rd parallel. Exactly. Huh. Doug, Doug Van Dorn's suggestion. That's right Very on. Very good. Yeah. So a lot to talk about there. Until next time, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Blathery Sharon Gilbert. And for Grace and Glory, who have no doubt rearranged the uh, house. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. PID Radio is produced by Gilbert House and released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Follow us online, Twitter, at PID Radio, or the PID Radio page at Facebook. Join us each week for our online Bible study, The Gilbert House Fellowship, online at gilberthouse.org.